If you're just getting started with Todoist or thinking about using Todoist and want a quick overview of how it works, kind of how it's put together, how you're going to use it, this is going to be a great video for you. Hey, I'm Adam with the Productivity Academy. And like I said, in this video, we're going to get into a little bit of an overview of Todoist. Um, so let's just start talking about this now. What you're seeing now is once you're logged in, this is kind of your, your home, your inbox. This is what you see. And in this video, I will be just showing um, how it looks like here on the desktop, on the web. Um, there's The functionality is virtually identical on mobile devices. Of course, the layout slightly different, um, but what you see here will make sense as well, but much easier to show things here. Okay, very simply, you can click to add tasks and you basically have tasks and projects. And you can go in here and you can make things more complex. You can have subtasks, you can have uh, projects within projects. There's a lot of things you can do, but like I said, I wanna keep things simple um, and just show you what you can do with this. There are additional videos I have, check the description down below that goes into more details about things like projects, um, uh, subtasks, how to do some more detailed work, tons of more information out there. Like you can see here, you can just type things in. Um, so we can call this a, um, this is the name of the task. And then down here, you know, maybe I wanna say something about the task that is helpful or a link like www.google.com. Okay, there's a lot you can set on here. Right now, I'm not using the paid version of Todoist. Um, I have years and years of using it, but right now I'm using more uh, ClickUp for project management and then, that comes along with task management. So I'm using that as well. Neat system to check out, uh, but Todoist can do a lot of what you need. So you can set the due dates as well as the priorities. Um, something that's really important about the dates is you can set some really neat things just by typing them in. Like we could type in tomorrow and usually that will pick it up. It depends where you're doing this. Um, so let's go ahead and add this. Actually, sorry, it was in the title tomorrow. And if we hit enter, we can see already it's setting the due date. Um, so I'm going to actually erase that and put in today and we will add task and you'll see it pop up right here. Okay. There's a few things you can do. You can edit the task. Maybe you misspelled something. You need to add something to it. That's great. Just click, you get back to the same box. We can go over here. We can change a due date. You can comment on the task. Um, then there's a lot more options over here where you want to maybe copy the link. You need to duplicate it, move it somewhere. Again, this is the more complicated things that you can add to or you might need down the road. And with projects down here, this may be nice to organize things into that. If we click into that, we can see tasks which are in this project, which is called personal. You can create another one. Like maybe we want to add a project and we want to call it uh books to read. Uh, we can give it a nice color. Um, you can tell it what workspace you can add to favorites. You can have a list or a board um, or more. There's different views you can add. Again, I would just suggest starting with lists for now. And then we can add things in here. Maybe you just want to have somewhere quickly to pop in books like, um, well, better look at the library is one I need to read and I need to learn how to spell that correctly and maybe traction. Okay, so just fill that out a little bit and show you what you can do here. Um, again, if you click into any of these um, actions, you can see that there's a lot more you could do. You could add another project. You can edit things, add it to your favorites, duplicate it, share it. Um, you can import or browse templates. You can email tasks to projects. Again, that there's a video on that down below. Uh, if you're interested in using that, that kind of opens up some automation possibilities, although Todoist does integrate with a ton of... Um, of different apps. And then if you include using Zapier or make.com, something like that in there, you have a lot more options. Okay. Um, so what happens, let's say you're in your inbox when you check things off. Well, goes. That's nice. It just disappears. It comes off and you can um, find completed tasks. That's something else you can do. Uh, but over here, you've got your main bar of, you know, upcoming. Maybe you don't want to just see today. You want to look ahead and you can see, okay, if you have any tasks coming, um, and then you can also see things where you can create filters. Like if you had set that priority flag, you could say, hey, what's all the priority one really top priority stuff? Um, maybe it's assigned to me if others, if you're using this in kind of a team sense. Um, but this is enough, I think, to really get you started um, and to let you understand a little bit about how this works. Find Todoist to be a great tool um, for a single use. Um, I haven't used it with a team, so I'm not saying it's bad for teams or anything like that. I just don't have experience using it in that context, uh, but I've found it to be really useful and I loved it when I was using it on my own. I just ended up needing uh, something to use more with a team and since it kind of came with task management, 
why use two tools when one will do. But highly recommend Todoist. Great tool, fantastic, easy to use, love the UI, um, very intuitive. So give it a shot. Uh, if you haven't, if you have any questions about Todoist, uh, about getting started, anything like that, leave a comment below. Let me know and I will get back to you.